Our other three thigh movers, we're going to look at sartorius, tensor fascia latte, and iliopsoas. Those are our three um, kind of weird ones. Sartorius might be my all-time favorite muscle of ever. You can totally see it right here. It's a superficial muscle. It attaches to the anterior superior iliac spine, proximally. And then it crosses, so it's kind of lateral at its proximal attachment, and then it literally crosses across the thigh, which is absolutely fantastic. And then it does like this whole S action because it starts with an S, sartorius, and it attaches almost on the tibial tuberosity. So we say it attaches to the medial side of the tibial tuberosity. So it forms this S action, which completely um, or informs the action that it can generate when it contracts. And if you can imagine, like visualize this. I wish I could grab it and like shorten it. But if you shorten this thing, you actually are going to pull, you're going to laterally rotate your thigh, you're going to flex your thigh, and then since you crossed both the, the hip joint and the knee joint, you're also going to flex the leg, and you do this medial rotation of the leg. Now you're lateral, laterally rotating the thigh and medially rotating the leg with this one muscle, and it ends up crossing your leg. Like it's called sartorius because sartorius was the tailor or shoemaker, somebody who crossed his legs when sewing up or fixing things. I think he's a tailor. Regardless, I mean, that muscle is awesome. It makes it so you can cross your legs. All of these muscles, all, all of them, if you do an action, if you find where you would expect the muscle on your body and then you do the action, you can feel which muscles are active when you're doing the action. So cross your legs and feel for your sartorius, and you can totally tell, like, whoa, there's that crazy, it's crossing and wiggling and waggling, and whoa, I just crossed my legs. So cool. Now watch. We're going to go back here. That's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> the first attachment of our friend sartorius is anterior superior iliac spine. And my second attachment is the medial edge of tibial tuberosity. And you know what? We're just going to call it good and say that it's going to let us cross our legs. And if you think about all the pieces that are involved, lateral rotation of the thigh, medial rotation, rotation of the leg, flexion of the leg and flexion of the thigh. You can put all those pieces together and you just cross your legs. Okay. Um, iliopsoas. Let's check out this one. This is actually two. I'm going to just tell you this. I'm going I'm to tell you this right now because iliopsoas is two muscles, iliacus and psoas. P, uh-uh. P-S-O-A-S, -S, and it's psoas major. But I read somewhere today when I was studying, because I study a lot, I was reading that there in 40% of the population there's a psoas minor, but the rest of us don't have it. So if anybody wants to volunteer to be a, you know, if we dissected our whole class, we could find 40% of us with psoas majors, I mean minors. This is just to give you perspective on this muscle because I think it helps to, to, I mean, you might even not be able to find iliopsoas as a muscle itself. Okay, let's go look at it. Um, here is iliacus attached to what? The iliac fossa. And there's psoas. And where is so, the psoas muscle attached to? transverse processes of T12 to L5. So it's attached to the uh, vertebral column. 
and then they share a distal attachment on the lesser trochanter of the femur. Got there. Okay, so let's go write those down. Our proximal attachment, we, we have to name both of them because we're rock stars and we're just going to do that. So we have um, the iliac fossa and the transverse processes of T12 to L5. And then my distal attachment is going to be the lesser trochanter of the femur. And the major actions of these guys, we've got multiples. First of all, we cross the hip joint. So if you imagine that thing, let's go just take a look at it one more time. If you imagine those fibers shortening, what's going to happen? What's going to be the biggest thing that's going to happen? We're going to flex the thigh. There's also going to be some rotation action that happens. In fact, I believe it's lateral rotation of the thigh and also some adduction. So let's write those things down. We're going to, um, got to have a new color. We're going to flex the thigh. We also have some lateral rotation and adduction. And now let's talk about the tensor fascia latte because you know that I flex, I contract my tensor fascia latte when I need someone to go get me a latte. Okay, let's take a look at this guy. Tensor fascia latte. Not thrilled with this picture because it kind of makes it look whatever. The attachment is actually a little bit posterior to the anterior superior iliac spine. I wish that, I mean, part of me just wants to say, dude, let's just call it the anterior superior iliac spine, but it isn't exactly on the anterior superior iliac spine. So it's a little bit posterior to that, although this picture makes it look like it's anterior to that. It attaches to the iliac spine. It also attaches to what's called the IT band. And let's see if we can put some muscles back together on this thing to kind of orient ourselves. You can still see it. And apparently, here it is on the side, it actually, you can, you can find it. It's a little tiny nubbin muscle. And it connects to the IT band, which is this huge, massive, long piece of connective tissue. In people who are super fit, like marathon runners, you can actually see the IT band because it's, it's this tight piece of, um, connective tissue that separates compartments in, of muscles, so muscles bulge around that thing, and you see this nice little line down the middle. So, um, okay, let's go write down what it is that this thing is. We have one attachment on the iliac crest. I'm cool with that. And one attachment to the IT band. And then this guy is a hip flexor. So it flexes the hip. It also does some medial rotation, and if you look at where it is, you can kind of visualize how that would happen. And it also abducts. And again, you can kind of visualize how we could flex our hip, do a little abduction, a little bit of medial rotation. And if you do those things and you feel you'll feel the muscle contracting, and then you know, oh, that's where my tensor fascia latte is. Don't worry, I will make sure your tensor, tensor fascia lattes are very um, fit because you can all go get me lattes and make them strong. Okay. The next group, hmm, the adductors, the adductor group. And these guys, um, what do you think their action is? 